one day, Woodford was walking home, and he realised with a start, Oh God, I've left me knickers hanging out in a line there. In his mind's eye, he could see his two roommates going, What's this? Have a bit of fun with this, won't we? God, he was horrified. They'd probably string it up from the rafters and show the whole town. And the women would stop and say, Oh my! And the gentlemen would be startled, say, Good God! Why, Woodford couldn't bear the thought. If Mary Ellen would see, oh my God, who knew what the fallout would reach? He hoped that if she happened to be strolling along outside, she had a particular wide-brimmed hat which would conceal most of her peripheral vision, and therefore she wouldn't notice. If that were the case, he sat down and pouted. Why is it have to have been like this to me? Why me? I should be at home strolling my fingers through her lovely raven hair, rather than here sitting on this outhouse musing about what my roommates are doing with my underwear. As you can see, Woodford was a rather dramatic man. He came from a rather strange place, the brainchild of a woman named Gloria, whose brain was, admittedly, much larger than most of the rest of the folk, and she was constantly waited upon by several handmaids, one of them who possessed a particularly vast expanse of bosom and was well known amongst the gentlemen. The other possessed the most marvellous gluteus maximus throughout the kingdom, and between the three of them, they made quite a striking sight. Kathy was Woodford's cousin, and she suffered from a severe cocaine problem. Her husband Tom was a powerlifter, known for mending boots and inserting those boots far inside of the rectum of anyone who dared come across his path. Woodford's mind scanned through the potential list of allies or enemies that he could recruit for this endeavor. Ah, oh, shucks, he said. There's no one that fits the bill. <sighs> but wait, who's the light? He said with a start. Why was the town constable? Hey, you! Are these your underwear? You son of a bitch! Woodford was startled. <gasps> oh no, it's true then! And he made a mad dash for it. Meanwhile, on the other side of town, Glomphidius Mormeyer sat twirling his mustache, thinking, There must be something dastardly I could be doing at this hour. His partner, Horatio Balafovel, said, It's like I told you, sir. There's no trouble we can't find this afternoon. Why don't we bust out the wine then? Early, what say ye? He said with a click of his little high heel. I'd like to go down there and look at those tiny dancers. Wouldn't you then? I especially like the ones with the little bobby pincushion waist. I happen to particularly like that style of body, he said with rather slimy lick of his purple lips. Unbeknownst to him, the butler, Mr. Studebaker, stood listening at the nearby doorway. I know it, those disgusting perverts. Just wait till they see what I put inside of their souder, he said. It must be noted here that he was dressed most inappropriately for the occasion. Meanwhile, down at the schoolyard, the headmaster was busy telling the bespectacled schoolchildren, Just look at that. I told you, look right there. That's exactly what a type of life you'll have in front of you if you don't mind the education, he said, never missing an opportunity to try to twist something to fit his agenda. Meanwhile, Woodford had taken his place behind the Duchess, hiding himself in her veil, pretending to be part of her entourage. The Duchess was a bit daft and didn't quite know exactly what was going on ever, as the length of her hat showed. After all, she was several months pregnant and she couldn't remember for the likes of her how to even make a baby, much less how she'd become pregnant in the first place. Some things are better left unsaid. Back at the palace, the Duchess sat down and hung her hat in its customary place above her chair. The servants were horrified as the veil continually tripped up inside of the beef wellington that they were trying to serve. Oh my, I'm so sorry miss, I didn't see your veil there. I'm afraid I've got a bit of gravy on it. <laughs> Meanwhile, Captain Brumbelow had retrieved those neckers are these, he said with a grimace. I'll find out, as he took a giant whiff. <sniffs> Whose scent is that? I'll figure it out, I wills. Back at the palace, Woodford began changing out of his manservant clothes. He had a nasty idea. You there, homeless person, trade me your clothes, will you? Don't mind me, sir, a mere puppet am I. You would have a bit of change, perhaps, a little swig of wine buried inside that little menstrual dress you got on there, sir. Woodford was horrified at the man's appearance. The thought of wearing his dusty clothes made him grimace. But something had to be done. He needed an alibi, and he needed one quickly. He was running out of time. 
Suddenly, a sharp noise burst out of the plaza. <gasps> he jumped startled. In a flash, the homeless person was gone. Captain Brumbelow, meanwhile, making his way across the dining room table, tracing the scent. I just know that person that owned them Snickers was here, right around this beef wellington plate. Captain Blackbeard arrived. Hi there, how you doing, matey? Look here. <laughs> I got my head transfused with a palm tree, says I. Where's the rub? Now look here, Winifred. I'll, I won't tell you again. The mother-in-law watched from the back seat. Go on, George. Hit her, George. It's the only way she'll learn. Mm, you heard my mother. Turn your cheek. But Jimmy, no. No, Jimmy. You call this spaghetti, eh? The worst marinara I've ever seen. Look how it's running right off the noodle there. There's no visible solids. Yep. I don't need no internet. This is, this is a, can you send a fax with this or what? Anybody know how to work this? No. Hold on, hold on, hold on there, Georgie. Wait, wait, hold on, hold, 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 who are you? And why are you holding that cudgel like that? It's just a churro. All right, Winifred. Now, I don't want to be here very long. So when I give the signal, you pretend you've got a headache, all right? And then I'll pretend I've got to take you. Come along now, Mary. I'd love to see you out there. Besides, I'd like to get a little nip before it gets too late. Arthur, is that you? You're late. It's snarkleberry. Well, of course I'm on the guest list. Check it again. Toy Story 5, please. Uh, just, uh, just one ticket, thank you. My valet ticket? Uh, hold on, it's somewhere in this pocket here. God damn, drag this cape in his extra large pocket. Um, peekaboo! <laughs> Larry, is that you down there? I can't really see you with this visor on now. Well, I'm certainly down here, Miss Disney. Well, what kind of hat you got on there? Is everything all right? Come along, you cheeky wench. I'll have that earring now. My God, look at those. Just look at those breasts. <laughs> they are marvelous. There's the other Just take it easy for a second, okay? Is the food all right, my dear? I don't know. I guess so. Look here, you fat son of a bitch. This is your tab, all right? You ate this food, now you pay for it. Let me see that. Huh? You've got the wrong guy. Let me see that. Let me see that. My God, Carolyn. The size of that bow. I'm up here, Jimmy. Man, this sucks. Freaking train taking forever. Excuse me. Pardon me. Do you happen to have the time and the direction to Third Street? <laughs> we <laughs> You gotta try this <laughs> humbug out of my way, you drunk buffoon. Oh Frank, come on. Can't we just go? <laughs> I've told you right on, sir. Carry on and it's like I always say, Gaffner. A bead in the hand is worth two in the bushel. I might have some thoughts on that, as it turns out. Man, this is stupid. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Hey, what did you say? Who? Who did you say that you were looking for exactly? And why are you here? Roger, you've been drinking? Oh, frick. I dropped my card piece, damn it. Where the hell is it? And presto alamagisto. Watch as I pull an alligator out of my top hat. Oh, wait. Richard, is that you? I can't feel anything. Finally. Oh, how horrid. Hey, Mom, look at that guy got a lady's hat on. Laura, Laura, please, won't you come outside? I, I'm sorry. I just, I can't live without you, girl. 